Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with Math Stats, uh, and in this video, another video in our series of videos dealing with calculus uh, and limits, specifically focusing on epsilon delta proofs, uh, we'd like to show, uh, we'd like to use an epsilon delta proof to, to prove that the limit of a rational function is actually equal to a specific value, okay? In this case, we'd like to show that the limit of x squared plus 2x plus 1 over 2x plus 3 as x tends to 1 is in fact equal to 4 over 5. And this particular rational function, yeah, that there's no commonality between the numerator and the denominator, it's insoluble. Uh, okay, so that's that's an interesting fact for this particular proof because it's going to allow us, it's going to introduce a number of extra constraints that we're going to have to consider and that we're going to have to solve. Uh, but let's just recall the definition of a limit. So let's just recall uh, we have the definition of a limit says this, is that for each and every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that for each and every x satisfying, satisfying, okay, satisfying what? Well, satisfying the condition that zero is less than the absolute value of x minus a, which is less than delta. So uh, that that implies that f of x minus l is less than epsilon, okay? So really the, the epsilon delta proof requires that we find some appropriate delta to go along with this epsilon that's given, okay? And once we find that appropriate delta, if we assume this particular fact here is true for all x in that particular region, well then what we have is that we have to be able to show that f of x minus l from this fact that f of x minus l is less than epsilon once we find the appropriate delta. So in the air case, so in air case, uh, we need to show that for each and every epsilon greater than zero, that there exists a delta greater than zero, such that for each and every x satisfying the condition that zero is less than x minus a. Now, a in this case is one. That's where the limit is tending to. Uh, minus one is less than delta. That this implies that f of x, that's the absolute value of f of x. So the absolute value of x squared plus 2x plus 1 over 2x plus 3, that's the absolute value of that minus the limit, minus 4 over 5, that that's less than epsilon, okay? So we need to find this delta. So what we'll do is this, is that we have our premise. So we have our premise here. This is our premise, okay? And we also have our conclusion over here, our conclusion. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the conclusion and try to find an appropriate delta. Okay? And that's the usual uh, uh, attack strategy that we'll have in these particular situations. So let's just say, <clears throat> in anticipation, in anticipation okay, of finding an appropriate, appropriate delta, delta. Okay. Well, then let's consider. Let's consider. Let's consider f of x, the absolute value of x, x minus l is less than epsilon, okay? So that is, that is what we're going to consider is we're going to consider uh, x squared plus 2x plus 1 over 2x plus 3 minus 4 over 5, the absolute value of that less than epsilon. And we're just going to do some algebra here on this, yeah? And actually what we're going to try to show then is instead of looking at this this horrible looking situation here, okay, we'll just we'll just reduce this down with algebra. So we get a common denominator. The common denominator is going to be 5 times 2x plus 3. So actually our common denominator here is going to be 5 times 2x plus 3 is effectively 10x plus 15, okay? Uh, 2x plus 3 goes into 10x plus uh, 15 five times. So that gives us uh, 5x squared plus 10x plus 5. And 5 divides into 10x plus 15, 2x plus 3 times. So it's minus 4 times 2x plus 3, which gives us minus 8x uh, minus, minus 12. That this must be less than, less than epsilon. And when we work this through, this is just a quadratic. This becomes 5x squared. Uh, plus 2x, okay, uh, minus 7, all over 10x plus 15, that we have the absolute value of that must be less than epsilon. And what we can do is we can factor this particular quadratic. When we factor this quad quadratic, let's say if we just use the rational root, root test to find uh, appropriate roots, what we'll end up with is we end up with the fact that, so this implies this, which implies this, and this is actually going to imply 
uh, we, we end up, when we factor this here, we're going to end up with x minus 1 times 5x, <clears throat> 5x plus 7, all over uh, 10x plus 15. The absolute value of that is less than epsilon. And using the laws of absolute values, this implies that the absolute value of x minus 1 times the absolute value of 5x 